Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Welcome to my video. Today I want to share with you some tips if you have a child with a disability. Now, whether they be a young child, uh, just growing up, going through school, or they're already an adult, I'd like to share with you some helpful tips so that you can plan for both your future and theirs and some of the things that you might want to think about. Now, obviously, if you do have a child with a disability, there are certain things that you need to consider. There may be carer payments, there may be future payments. If they have such a dis disability that prevents them from working in future, obviously this raises a different set of questions. So what do we need to think about when it comes to our estate planning, our insurances, and our general finances? So I'd like to share with you three tips, three things to consider. Let's dive right in. Now the first one to consider is your life insurance. So do you need to actually factor in an additional amount for them? Do you want to factor in a lump sum to buy them a house, to pay off debt, to pay for their education? Are they able to work? Do you need to factor in a future income? If you do have a child or children with disabilities, it's very important to think about how this impacts your insurances. Now it's not just life cover, you may also want to think about what impact it has on your disability insurances, income protection and even trauma cover. Now we won't get into health insurances because I think that's a completely different topic. We're just talking about life and disability cover. The second thing to think about is any trust planning. Now here we're looking at distribution of assets now while you're alive or potentially distribution of assets once you pass. Now one of the items that you may want to consider when we look at an Australian regulatory framework is we have what is called a special disability trust. Now it's very important to seek professional advice here because the rules will no doubt change over time, but what it effectively allows you to do is contribute up to $500,000 into this trust and have those assets exempt from the Centrelink asset test. What that may mean is that your child, as they get older, will continue to receive a full disability pension. As I said, do your homework, check if this is right for you, but it could be a very helpful tool when you're planning for their future, particularly if they're not going to be able to work or if they're not going to be able to work and earn a full-time income. The third item to consider is your will and obviously other estate planning tools and documents that are associated. Here you need to think about whether you need to allow for additional income or additional payments to your child should certain assets be gifted to your, uh, to your child with a disability? Do you need to think about a testamentary trust? So that way you can have some input and control into how those assets are distributed even after you're gone. Or you may decide to set up a trust that provides them with a future income. There's lots of things to consider here. It's not as simple as just having a standard will that X dollars goes to your son or daughter in future, but you can have a lot more control with different trusts. As I said, a few different things to consider. If you are in a position where you have a, a disabled family member or disabled child, if you have any questions at all, please do drop me a note. I hope you found these tips helpful. As I said, a few things to think about. Don't forget to subscribe and hit like. Thank you very much for tuning in.